kids in Harare, there are so many challenges that uh, we're facing with. It feels great to, to play a, an important role, a positive role in their lives. My name is Vyolwe Tukai. I'm a skills coach. I mean, I think any time you show up with a soccer ball, you immediately have 20 friends kind of surrounding you, ready to play a game. And I think it's really exciting to see that play itself out all over the world. I think the language of football is so powerful because it can be applied to, to what's happening in life, right? You cannot score a goal without your team behind you. If you look at what sort of the planet, if you will, has in common, other than humanity, the next thing, even possibly before gender, might be the sport of soccer. I learned a lot and I was able to apply everything that was given to me uh, to the soccer field and when I went in to play basketball. You have to learn to work as a team in society. You cannot learn how to work by yourself. But if you can work as a team, the key of success will be much higher. One of the things I see around the world, whether it be here in Africa or in the United States, is that in a lot of times you see young people who you know, put each other down or disrespect each other and that kind of thing. And, and I think one of the things we really try and teach is the, the opposite of that behavior. Respect is one of the key tenets of the curriculum. One of the thing, first things that young people do when they join the grassroots soccer team or join the skills team is they sign a contract to respect one another. And I think that's key to providing that safe space where young people can really talk. Like it's achieved once, ne? let's give them a big key. No? apresentar para vocês um pouquinho sobre o Instituto Bola para Frente. O Instituto ele tem o objetivo de formar jovens e crianças para o mercado de trabalho e para o futuro, através do esporte educacional. Aqui a gente joga futebol e ajuda muito jovens e crianças a saírem da rua e dar mais motivação a eles. Aqui eu aprendi diversas coisas, como o trabalho em equipe, como a motivação através do esporte, como a liderança, como também respeitar as pessoas. Mas isso mais para frente eu vou contar um pouquinho melhor para vocês. Gente, aqui é a secretaria e aqui é onde são feitas matrículas dos novos educandos daqui. Aqui também, gente, é a cafeteria, é onde a gente toma o nosso café. Bom dia, gente! Nosso lanche, que geralmente é uma delícia, o lanche são muito bem servidos. Teve uma vez que teve milkshake, olha, foi uma delícia! Galera, olha só, bom dia! Tá fraco? Bom dia! O meu trabalho aqui é com esporte. Né? É o esporte e educação, onde a gente procura trabalhar é, a disciplina com eles dentro de campo e também fazer com que eles possam levar a escola para a vida. Então, é basicamente isso. Aqui é o que a gente vai sempre buscar e aprender. É saber que no esporte ou em qualquer outra atividade aqui, seja ela cultural, vocês têm que aprender a respeitar o colega, né? É, aqui no, no Bola Pra Frente, a gente aprendeu a conviver com pessoas diferentes da gente, de cores diferentes, de raças diferentes. E o futebol em si nos ajudou a compartilhar é, experiências de vida, de, no caso de cultura e de outras coisas. Bom, aqui é a parte assim, que eu amo, é uma parte que eu gosto muito, que é onde fica o campo de futebol. Bom, aqui através do esporte eu aprendi muito sobre liderança, sobre trabalho em equipe e principalmente como respeitar as diversas culturas. Assim, ter um trabalho interpessoal melhor. Assim, me relacionar mais em sociedade, que tem sido muito bom para mim, tem me ajudado muito. Eu sei que vai me ajudar muito mais no futuro. Aqui também eu aprendi muito sobre, assim, você respeitar as diversas pessoas, independente de raça, de cor, de, assim, condição financeira. Tudo que eu é, aprendi dentro do futebol, hoje eu aplico na, na minha vida, respeitando... Uh, os meus semelhantes, uh, enfim, as pessoas de um modo geral, respeitando horários, uh, 
Eu acho que é muito importante que as pessoas sintam é, o respeito de, de minha parte. Eu procuro fazer disso a minha maneira de viver bem. Strongest democracies flourish from frequent and lively debate, but they endure when people of every background and belief find a way to set aside smaller differences in service of a greater purpose. some leadership skills to the younger kids wow. at uh, Soccer Without Borders. Ah, oh, it's so uh, nice. So now I have to pick up my, my, my staff and go back to the field. It's been pretty nice to work with kids from different backgrounds, from different countries. We got to learn from them, teach them and work with them. It's been pretty awesome. All right, let's go. In a place like Oakland where so many different kinds of people are living together in the same city, um, in the same place, it's, it's really important that we have people who are, have an active understanding of what it means to respect um, diversity to be tolerant of each other's differences. Whatever it is, they're going to have to get comfortable interacting with people that don't speak their language necessarily, that don't know about their background, that have certain assumptions about them. It's really a critical skill for them to be able to, to work in a group with whoever they're, they're assigned to work with. If, even the, the guy doesn't speak the same language as yours, you have to show him some, some, some respect. Well, strength and diversity means to me uh, that we're trying to build a society in which people, no matter what their backgrounds, can not only get along, but they can be successful working together. There's all of these differences, and you let those differences kind of dictate how you interact. Or you can look at, you know, there's all these similarities, and, you know, we're actually on the same team here, both metaphorically and literally. In fact, what we're trying to do with young people in soccer is to turn them into world citizens in their own communities through the diversity of their teams. So the Life Skills Program targets youth that has obviously made wrong choices and also have difficulties in terms of being um, removed from their families because that is the reality that a lot of the youth that's placed in residential care was removed uh, many a times without their consent. And I think, to be honest, as a South African growing up in a country, having experienced what it is to be separated or treated as if not part of a group, one gets left with negative feelings. But what works for me is that I've looked around and tell and tell myself, there's a lot to be learned from different race groups. In, in spite of our differences, there's also similarities. Soccer in South Africa was also a way for uh, uh, people to express their own humanity, right? Because they lived in a society in which uh, black was inferior and white was superior, and a complete lack of human rights and civil rights for the majority of the population. And yet, when black athletes came onto the field and played soccer together, sometimes across uh, uh, ethnic, uh, religious, and, and even racial lines, the possibility of an alternative to a segregated society were made real. What, what soccer teaches is that no matter what, once you're in a team with that person, you need to respect that person, you need to um, tolerate that person, and you need to get along with that person. We work in, in the colored areas, in the, in the predominantly black areas, and also in areas in town where, where we have white children as well in children's homes. And these young people would generally not interact with each other. But now because on a Wednesday afternoon there's a football match happening, they've all been drawn together. 
and you bring them together and you confront them directly with, with their differences and you talk about it. What is amazing to me is that you don't have to do so much talking. Um, once they, they are involved in activities, those barriers, those boundaries go go away and they form one strong group. They don't differ anymore between is that a, a black or white or a colored person and that happens very, very quickly and I think that shows how powerful sport and those activities can be. It's very important for us, um, our country, to unite and, and people see that they, this, even though in our differences, that we can achieve so much more. When I look back, you know, uh, uh, 1995 when uh, we won the, the Rugby World Cup. It was amazing and it brought South Africa close together. You know, uh, both races become one. Anything we can do to bring differing groups together using sport will make a difference in the future. If people learn to play together, they may learn to work together and to live together. Similar to what's going to happen now when the World Cup starts in June, the country is going to be united. Colour issue for some re strange reason, don't know why, but it just gets pushed back and people will dance and celebrate. Football has really played a massive role in terms of raising awareness, you know, in terms of respecting each other. Since now we've got the World Cup, I think, I think uh, for us is the award, you know, for what we achieved in a short period of time. Earlier, it's the number one sport in the world that's loved by uh, white people, black people, mixed race, Asian, you know, whatever you, whatever you want, it's enjoyed by everybody. So in other words, you know, if, you, if you're going to play it, you're going to come into contact with um, people from, from different cultures and different races. And uh, if you're going to enjoy it and play together, you've got to be tolerant. And so if you do that from a young age, you build tolerance within yourself uh, towards other people. And I think that's, that's one of the big pluses about football. Young girls, the confidence that soccer brings them, the leadership skills that soccer brings them, but more than anything else, the teamwork skills, learning to work together as a team, makes all the difference in their futures. Sou uma futura jogadora de handball. Eu sou a futura nutricionista. Sou a futura cineasta. Sou a futura figurinista. E eu sou uma futura pediatra. Eu sou uma futura patológica. E eu sou uma futura administradora. Eu sou a futura enfermeira. É ajudar o grupo inteiro. Mas eu ajudo quando eu falo. Aline, procura fazer isso dessa forma. É trabalhar em equipe quando eu chego na Aline e converso com ela para ela, ela, ela melhorar. Quem vai tirar o time? Oi, dona Elsa. Tudo bem? Oi. Tudo bem. Bom dia. Bom dia. Tudo bom? Qual é a disciplina que você vai dar hoje para os jovens? Hoje eu vou falar sobre direitos humanos. É, direitos humanos e tem a questão do gênero também, né? Que a gente tem. Pode é. Eles percebem diferenças entre mercados de trabalho para o homem né, e para a mulher. Então eu percebo que eles já sabem, eles já percebem que o mercado é mais flexível para absorver homens, né, rapazes. E para as mulheres ainda é, ainda tem muito preconceito, né? Então isso tudo está começando ainda a acontecer. O meu ídolo no futebol é a Marta, porque pela, pelo pouco que eu sei da história dela, eu acho que ela, se ela conseguiu, eu... É, me incentivou, me incentiva a lutar, a continuar lutando, a estudar. Se ela conseguiu, eu também posso dizer assim. Women's sports heroes tell young girls that they can be strong in body and in mind. Uh, but it also says I can be that too. I think young girls can relate more to women's sports heroes than they can to any other kind of woman leader. De ver que as pessoas me têm como exemplo, não só no Brasil, mas em vários outros países. E eu tento retribuir de, de uma forma é, à altura, né? Mostrando meu trabalho dentro de campo, fora de campo, e incentivando as crianças a, a ter um futuro melhor e praticar o esporte. É bom, é gratificante. Isso ajuda também a Suelen querer saber o que é da vida. Yeah. 
a influenciá-la, procurar seguir uma carreira, não digo precisamente a carreira do futebol, mas uma carreira promissora, algo que dê um futuro bom para ela. Ih, acho que tá na hora, né? Nossa é verdade, tá tenho que... Pensando, ah. né? Vamos Tchau, vou começar. Tchau, tá? Vamos lá, meninas? Vamos começar? Bom dia, pessoal. Bom dia. Tudo bem? My culture is, is that um, we don't look at elders in their eyes when we talk to them because that shows a sign of disrespect. Um, and uh, girls have to be submissive to men because, you know, men are the head of the home. It, it becomes difficult for these young women in our communities because, you know, guys, you know, walk over them, you know, um, and they can't really stand up for themselves. And, you know, Praise Partners really addresses that because it then start at the younger age to create that dialogue between a young man, a young boy and a young girl. They will watch each other throughout the, the practice. And then after the practice, you know, all of them, they go to their Praise Partners and really, you know, praise their partners and say you know this is what you did good and a girl could look at, into like a guy's eyes you know and feel that they have a voice and hopefully that when these girls grow up they could stand up um, for themselves um things that i didn't think i was capable of doing conquering your fear and producing and absolutely performing when you have to to have that knowledge about yourself that you're capable of that um is an incredible thing to learn and to learn something like that at such a young age And it doesn't matter if you're American or, or if you're a girl in Brazil or you're a girl growing up in, in, in Lagos, Nigeria, or wherever. That is just, it's magic when it happens. And uh, all over the world, girls and women have an opportunity to experience that through this great sport. Every bit of evidence is that if you educate women, if you give them opportunities, the economy of the nations they are in is stronger. You cannot have a strong economic base in your country without educating women and giving women opportunities. Eu gostaria de dizer para essas meninas e jovens não desistirem de seus sonhos, pois obstáculos existem para a gente amadurecer e crescer cada vez mais. Não desistam, lutem e corram atrás, pois as oportunidades vêm, basta nós agarrá-las. Okay, welcome. This is Kailicha Harare. As I'm walking to the Football Pop Center, we all meet uh, 120 kids. It's actually great. And they are coming from this area, Harare, as you can see. Okay, these kids are coming from this area. That's where they are facing challenges like drug, alcohol abuse. This center helps us into that. We are here in Kalicha, which is hosting the first Football for Hope Center. So Football for Hope Centers, um, it's part of the campaign 20 Centers for 2010, which is the official legacy campaign of the World Cup. It is led by two organizations, on the one hand we have FIFA, and on the other hand we have Three Football World, the organization which I am working for. The mission of 20 Centers for 2010 is to create community centers across Africa which use football as a tool to um, bring education and public health towards disadvantaged communities. The aim for the Football for Hope Centre here in Kailicha is basically to link you into public health services and education. It's not about playing the, the game of football, it's rather using um, the language of football and specific drills um, which children can understand. It's so much easier for them if, if it's connected to, to their world. In South Africa there's a huge amount of hope and a huge amount of opportunity. One of the things we want to do is, is help young people realize that that opportunity is out there, help them see that they have a future and give them hope for the future.
soccer is a great tool because it's easy to apply it in the context of a hands-on example so that we can focus on very obvious and transferable skills that the kids can use in other arenas of their lives. I've learned so many things with soccer, teamwork, leadership, and it's gonna help me be successful, be a successful person, work with different people, and reach my goal. O nosso grande trabalho e talvez o grande diferencial do programa é que a gente ajuda os jovens a fazer a ligação entre o futebol e o trabalho. Eu acho que são, o futebol, na verdade, ele incentiva a, a eles estarem vivenciando emoções, situações que podem acontecendo no mundo do trabalho. Eu acho que são não só no mundo do trabalho, mas no mundo enquanto pessoa. Não só para a sua vida, você não, não tem que só ser responsável na sua vida, mas olha o que significa ser responsável quando você joga bola, olha o que significa ser responsável. A habilidade que eu vou levar daqui é como respeito, como comunicação, como trabalho em equipe, que eu vou levar para o meu, meu lado profissional, porque como eu quero ser enfermeira, como eu aprendi a, a trabalhar em equipe, eu acho que isso vai me ajudar muito na minha vida profissional. I've learned so many things playing soccer, playing in soccer in the streets. Um, so many of my friends, now they're like behind the line because they did drugs, they did gangs, they skipped school, everything. I play, started playing soccer and I stayed away from them. I couldn't hang out with them anymore, but I made the right choices and now they're behind the line. I'm graduating and I'm going to school. In order to achieve your goals, both on the field and off the field, you have to be able to work with other people and learn how to manage your own role and your own behavior. A soccer team is a communication network on the field. Everybody, when they have the ball or even when they don't, has to be responsible for themselves. You have to take a leadership role. Are you ready to practice? I think sport can play a major role to our society today. All right, here we are. This is the soccer field. This is where I play with my brothers. This is where I learn how to be a better person. This is where we learn everything. First of all, sport can bring love, camaraderie, and respect. It can teach our kids to accept the diversity. It does change kids. It changes families and it changes communities. Kids that wouldn't have even been exposed to the sport are not only playing soccer, but using it as a vehicle for them to get those opportunities to go on to higher education and much better employment opportunities. Futebol, é, acho que na vida de todo brasileiro é, é, é uma coisa que é muito importante. A gente respira futebol no Brasil é, desde criança. Futebol é vida. Futebol é amor. Running onto that field, getting that ball in the back of the net, it does something. If you've never been on a football pitch and you've never scored, it's very difficult to experience that. But that feeling, nobody can take away. Football has given us that chance, you know, uh, uh, to learn and as well to introduce us to, to charity, you know, to look at life in a different perspective. Wherever you go, in whatever country you are in, it doesn't matter what language they are speaking there, football unites us. You can play and have the best time of your life and that's happening everywhere in the world. For me, it's basically living a legacy, you know, making sure that, you know, tomorrow is better than today um, and, you know, my kids, have a better future. Aproveitem bastante o futebol e a Copa do Mundo. Tchauzinho, gente. Beijo. Soca is the power now to rose everybody. DJ press rewind and come again. African soccer fever. Catch it, catch it.